Welcome to another day of Mishmas. So we are going to have a fun holiday type of day at home. I um, put up my Christmas tree, so I'm going to show you my tree. Um, I did purchase some more ornaments for it and that came in. So we'll put the ornaments on together. I thought that would be fun. Um, and then I wanted to bake my favorite, favorite Christmas cookies. They are ginger molasses cookies. <sighs> they are so delicious. Like if you're into that type of cookie, like a chewy ginger cookie, oh my God, these are so good. These are the best by far that I've tried because they're chewy. A lot of gingerbread cookies are like the hard and I like I like chewy cookies. Anyway, we're gonna do that today too. So I have not had a Christmas tree in about 20 years. Yeah, I think the last time I had a Christmas tree was in the year 1999. <laughs> and um, the reason why we stopped getting a Christmas tree was because uh, the dog that we had before Miss Butters was a pug. And um, if you're familiar with the pug breed, they really like to eat, but that that is like an understatement. What they really like to do is just shove anything into their mouths that fits. So we had picked up a tree, it was a real tree, and she just wouldn't leave it alone. She just kept going for the, you know, the lowest branches, just climbing underneath the tree, looking up and just kind of like gnawing on all the branches, eating the pine needles. Um, she even went over and started to drink the water out of the, out of the base of the tree and um, we eventually just had to get rid of the tree. Uh, it didn't even make it till Christmas because she was just too crazy about it. Um, so ever since then we were like, okay, we're not getting a tree. So we moved on and got like an artificial wreath. Um, we used to live in an apartment where we had like one huge like picture window in our living room. Um, and so we got like one of those giant wreaths. We got like a big stand for it. It was pre-lit, the whole thing. So that's what we did. We put it up, you know, on a table. It was in the window. It was fake. She couldn't get to it. And so that's what we did. Um, we don't really have like the right place for that wreath in this apartment. And I thought if there's any year, <laughs> if there's any year that existed that I needed a little extra bit of cheer, it's this year. It is the year 2020. So we got a tree and I got an artificial one because I didn't know if Miss Butters was going to have the same sort of munchy reaction to a real tree. So I was like, I'm just gonna play it safe and get an artificial tree and she's had absolutely no interest in it at all. So that is good. Um, but because I haven't had a tree in so long, I like don't, I don't have anything. I'm not someone that has like a whole storage room full of ornaments. We celebrated Christmas growing up, but it wasn't like that big of a thing. So I have like a handful of ornaments that somehow I've accumulated over the years, like a handful, but that's it. So, well, let me just show you. So here is our Christmas tree. Yay. So I had to purchase, you know, ornaments. And so I got a whole big box of silver and gold ornaments and you know they're pretty generic looking but I do think it's very festive I think the tree looks nice and sparkly um, I did get a star to put on the top and it said it was you know battery operated it lights up the whole deal but the batteries <laughs> the batteries are housed in a case that requires a teeny tiny screwdriver to open up which I haven't had the patience to look around for, so maybe we'll do that today too, because I was hoping I could be really lazy about <laughs> the star, but I think I'm gonna have to find a little screwdriver, put some batteries in. So this is the tree so far. Oh, let me show you the tree skirt. I did also get a tree skirt, and it's a gold sequin sparkly skirt. I think that's my favorite part of the tree is that, <laughs> is that tree skirt. It's so glitzy. So I essentially purchased everything off of Amazon. This is a seven and a half foot tree. I really don't know much about it, but I will link it down below if you guys are interested. I wasn't sure how tall our ceilings were and I think we could have gotten an even taller tree, but I figure if we wanna move around with this tree, this is like a, a nice kind of like average height that'll probably work anywhere. So since I had ordered all of those gold and silver ornaments, I thought maybe we could use like a splash of color. So I ordered a bunch of red 
ornaments. I think they're red and gold, but let's take a look. Oh, wow. It's like in its own little like carrying case. You know, in case I want to travel with my ornaments. Ooh, but there's some fun ones in here. Let's bring this over to the tree. ornaments on I think she's looking more festive I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep her simple you know and like clean or whatever but I like the red okay that like icicle ornament I'm gonna have to move that doesn't look right <laughs> hanging down like that well I think we're gonna be continuously decorating this tree but I think I want to put some bows on her just a different kind of texture on her I think that would that would do her some good. And I did want to show you some ornaments that I did have. So this is a baby yak. <laughs> um, I worked very closely when I was a hand knitwear designer, I worked very closely with um, a company that made baby yak yarn. So they had these felted ornaments that of course I had to get. Look how cute he is. And then here's one that I made. I would not be able to do that beading anymore and my edgings are terrible but that's one I made and then here is another one that I made Ooh, before I go up and shower um, my Amazon Prime Whole Foods delivery just came I needed some ingredients for these cookies so I was kind of waiting for it and I ordered it last night for delivery between 6 and 8 and it got here at like 6 10 my god that's like the best and they just leave here let me show you and they just leave these bags right outside your door it's so convenient all right should we do a quick little grocery haul <laughs> turkey bacon grass-fed organic ground beef um, pork chops, ooh, bone-in short ribs, ooh, air-chilled organic whole chicken legs, waffles for the husband, milk, scallions. Oh, they actually had some like cleaning wipes. So I ordered one tub of surface wipes. It's a lemon verbena scent. Light brown sugar. This is what I needed for the cookies. Some bone broth, oatmeal, for the husband. Ground ginger, another thing that I needed for the cookies. I got four organic sweet potatoes. And that is it. So I don't know if you guys have Whole Foods near you, um, but this prime delivery, it's such a lifesaver, especially when you're trying not to go out as much. It really is such a lifesaver. It's so great. And if I think if you order, what is it? If you order more than $35, delivery is free. Um, but like the time slots you have are a little bit further out, but they're two hour time slots. They just leave them outside. And you can pay, I think an extra $4.99 if you need your stuff like within the next two hours. Like that option I think is amazing. Absolutely amazing, especially during the holidays. Big fan, big, big fan of the Amazon Prime Whole Foods connection. All right, I'm gonna shower and then we're gonna make these cookies. All right guys, I'm all showered, ready to make cookies. I'm so excited. So. My favorite ginger cookie is the Ginger Spice Cookies. It was in Bon Appetit, November 1998. That's how old this recipe is, and I've been making it ever since. Uh, so I will try and find a link to it. Um, but anyway, if I can't find a link, I'll put the name of it, and maybe you guys can find it. Um, but I will try and find a link to it, and that will be down below in the description box. So let's go ahead and get started. So I need one stick of butter at room temperature. I always forget this, so I'm going to grab it now and take it out. I may have to warm it up artificially. Okay, first things first, I need an apron. All right, so I'm gonna start by mixing together the dry ingredients, which is the flour, the cinnamon, the ground sugar, the baking soda, the salt, and the cloves. That is the cinnamon. 
And then we need the ground ginger. Okay, so it was one and a quarter cups of flour, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Next I need one teaspoon of ground ginger. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of cloves. So I'm just gonna take a fork and combine everything. So next I have to mix the butter and the brown sugar, but this butter is still too cool and you don't want it melted because the consistency of the cookies will be completely altered. You want it softened. So it's sort of a delicate, a delicate situation. I have to microwave it, but on a really, really low level and just check on it very, very often. So I'm going to do that now. All right. So I have my stand mixer out. I also was able to successfully soften the butter. So I put it in for 30 seconds at the power level of three. And I did that twice and I got a really nice kind of softened consistency, not melted, <laughs> softened. So I need to put in the stick of butter and also two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. Now I'm gonna put on the attachment, lower it down. And I'm just gonna beat this until it's fluffy. And then we're gonna add one egg and two tablespoons of molasses. It's important to wipe your molasses jar clean because if you close your lid on any of the molasses, it will be glued shut. <laughs> So now we're gonna combine the dry ingredients with the wet, but I'm gonna take it slow. So I'm gonna do about one third at a time. So when we're done with everything, <laughs> basically what we need to do is chill it. So I'm gonna put some plastic over this and put it in the refrigerator. You're supposed to leave it uh, chilling overnight in the refrigerator, but since I'm doing this early in the morning, this will be ready for me like mid to late afternoon. So it'll definitely be ready for dessert. Very interested in the cookie making. <laughs> Hi, baby. All right, we are preheating the oven for 325, and I use my countertop oven uh, to make cookies because I only make a few at a time, so that's why I always use the smaller oven. And then I've got my super, <laughs> super old toaster oven sized cookie sheet. So then I use these pre cut cookie sheets. So awesome. They fit perfectly into this size pan, which is. Does it say? Well, it's 12 by 16. Anyway, I'll link it down below. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it fits perfectly into my toaster oven and these cookie sheets fit perfectly in here. So the cookie dough has been chilling for like seven hours now. And then in a relatively big bowl, because you wanna be able to roll the cookie ball around, you're gonna pour some granulated sugar in here. All right, so I've got my cookie dough here. I've got my bowl of sugar. I have my um, handy dandy cookie scooper. So I'm gonna take that 
and scoop some dough out. It's really hard because it's been chilling. And the dough inside the scooper is not gonna be perfect. I just use a scooper so that I get like approximately the same size balls. And so my cookies will approximately be the same size. You just wanna make sure the cookie ball is really like airtight here. So I'm squishing all the air out. And then you wanna just roll it around in the sugar. So here I've got two laid out. You just wanna take a glass that has like a flat bottom to it and you wanna use that to smush the cookie down. So I am just making four at a time because that's all I trust myself with. <laughs> Pretty much any amount I bake is the amount I'm gonna eat. So I'm gonna leave it with four. My husband and I can have two each. I think that's fairly sensible. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the oven. And I'm gonna change the time, bring it down to about 12 minutes. Oof, they're looking good. <laughs> These look ready. It's always hard to tell when they're in the oven, especially when they're not like a vanilla cookie because they're dark already. So like chocolate cookies, it's just hard to tell <laughs> whether or not they're like burning. But yeah, I can see like the browning around the edges. Oh my God, I wish you guys could smell this. But there's that browning I was talking about in there too. And they're gonna bake even more just sitting on this pan for a little while. So I'm gonna let them sit there for just a bit and then I'm gonna take them off and let them cool. Time to try one out. Mmm. Mmm. Perfect. The perfect ginger cookie. Oh my God. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys tomorrow for Mishmas. Check out the recipe down below in my description box. This is so good. <laughs>